Hi everyone! This video is about interspecific interactions. In class, we learned about biomes and how the abiotic conditions of a specific location, such as temperature and precipitation, determine which organisms can survive there. But there's always going to be more than one species that can survive a certain set of conditions, which means different types of organisms have to interact with each other. And that's what this video is all about. Interspecific interactions, just as it sounds, are interactions that occur between different species. And these are interactions that occur at the community level as opposed to the population level. So a population is a group of organisms of the same species living and interacting in one area, but a community is all of the individuals of many different species that are living and interacting in a different area. And these interactions result in adaptations because they affect the survival of the organisms that are involved. In this video, we're going to define the most common types of interactions, and then in class, we'll take a closer look at the different adaptations that evolve as a result. There are three main types of interspecific interactions that we're going to discuss. Competition, symbiosis, and interactions in which one species eats another, which includes both predation and herbivory. And we're going to classify each of these interactions using plus and minus to indicate whether the interaction is beneficial or harmful to each of the species involved. So we'll start with competition. Interspecific competition occurs when two or more species have to compete for limited resources in their environment, such as food or space. So in this example here, we have a hyena and vultures competing for the carcass of this dead animal here. They both want to eat the same thing. And in this example here, we have a rodent, a squirrel or a groundhog little thing. It's competing with these birds for the nuts and seeds that they both want to eat. So they're competing for the same resources. We would say that their niches overlap. And a niche is an organism's specific role in its environment, where it lives, what it eats, what eats it, etc. So this competition type of relationship would be classified as minus minus, because it's detrimental to both of the species involved. It makes both of their lives harder. And that's because each of them is getting less of the specific resource that they're competing for. So what happens when two species have to compete? There are two possible outcomes that we're going to look at. The first one is competitive exclusion, which means that one species dominates or wins. It outcompetes the other one because it's better adapted for obtaining the resource that they're competing for. When this happens, the other species must leave or adjust its niche or it's going to die out. A classic example of this was an experiment using this organism that you've seen before, this paramecium, this little protist that we examined under the microscope last semester. So in this particular experiment, researchers grew uh, one species of paramecium, this paramecium aurelia, all by itself. And they found that it reproduced really quickly, and after five days they had over 150 individuals and the population kept growing. And something similar happened when they grew a different species of paramecium in the lab, this paramecium caudatum. So it also did pretty well, reproduced, and the population grew. But when scientists grew both of these together, they found that paramecium aurelia outcompeted paramecium caudatum, which was just not as good at obtaining resources, so it died out. A more relatable example of competitive exclusion involves the red squirrel and the eastern gray squirrel. So the red squirrel is native to Europe, whereas the eastern gray squirrel is native to North America, but it was introduced to Europe in the 1870s. They're both squirrels, but the red squirrel is a little bit smaller, the gray squirrel is a little bit larger, and the gray squirrel also can digest acorns earlier in the season before the acorns are really mature, whereas the red squirrel can only digest mature acorns. So the gray squirrel could actually eat all those acorns before the red squirrel could get to them. And the red squirrel is also less resistant to a particular disease that the gray squirrel was already resistant to. So by 1945, you can see the gray squirrel had kind of taken over down here, and there were a few areas where they were overlapping a bit, both of them were coexisting. But by 2010, you could see that most of southern England was completely taken over by the gray squirrel, and there were just a few places where both of them were living, and the red squirrel was limited to just a few areas here. So we would definitely say that that gray squirrel was outcompeting the red squirrel. The other possible outcome of interspecific competition is resource partitioning, in which each species shifts its niche to use a slightly different subset of the resources. So we could say they learn to share by dividing up what's available, and it means that they no longer have to directly compete with each other. 
So in this example, our starting situation is one species of bird, this yellow bird, that has lots of different food resources available to it. It has food items in the tree, food items on the trunk, and food items in the grass, probably all different kinds of bugs. But when this species of red bird shows up, they're competing for the same resource, and there's not quite enough food for all of them. So what happens over many generations is that the different species become specialized to focus on a subset of food resources. So you can see that some of the birds are specializing in the food that's available up in the canopy in the top of the tree, and some of them are specializing in what's on the trunk. So they're using different subsets of the resources so they don't have to compete. It does mean that there's a little bit less available to both of them, but they don't have that competition anymore. The next type of interspecific interaction we're going to look at is symbiosis, which means interactions in which two species directly live together. And often one of them will live in or on the other one, but they don't necessarily have to be in direct contact all the time in order for it to be symbiosis. And there are several different types of symbioses. We're going to focus on two of them in this class. The first one is mutualism, which we classify as plus plus because it benefits both of the species that are involved. There are lots of examples of this that you're probably already familiar with, including many that we've already seen in class. So we'll just go over a few of them today. The first one would be legumes and the nitrogen fixing bacteria that live on their roots. So the nitrogen fixing bacteria are getting a place to live and resources and the plants are getting the usable nitrogen that those bacteria are converting for them. In class we also talked about mycorrhizae, the fungus that can live on plant roots and increase the surface area of the plant so the plant can absorb more water and the fungus also get a place to live and some resources. Another example that we looked at a little bit earlier would be angiosperms and pollinators. The pollinators get nectar from the plant in exchange for providing that direct sperm delivery service, so it benefits both of them. A couple other examples that we haven't studied in class directly would include clownfish and sea anemone. The clownfish helps protect the anemone by chasing away anything that would try to eat the anemone, and the anemone protects the clownfish because it has stinging cells, so it prevents things from getting near the clownfish that might want to eat it. And another example would be grazing mammals and insect-eating birds that live on them. So the birds will live on and, and near the, the mammals, and they'll eat the little insects that might land on the larger mammals. And the birds get food, and the mammals are also protected from diseases that the insects might be carrying. And there's lots of other examples out in nature, too. The other type of symbiosis that we're going to learn about is parasitism, which is classified as plus minus because it benefits one species, the parasite, and harms the other species known as the host. And usually the situation is that a small parasite lives on or inside the host and steals nutrients from it. So that's why it's uh, negative for the host. It's losing some sort of resource. And there's lots of examples of this one in nature too. One that you may be familiar with is mistletoe on trees. So if you've ever looked up at a tree, especially in the winter when it didn't have its leaves and noticed this green blob in there, that's mistletoe. It's a parasitic type of plant that actually steals water and other food resources from trees and other plants. As for an animal example, we've got ticks and mosquitoes that steal the blood of larger animals. So it's great for the tick and the mosquito, they get the food, but the host is losing its resources, losing its blood and other other resources sometimes too. This group of parasitism also includes the subset of pathogens, which are microscopic parasites that actually cause disease in their host. So they not only take resources, but they also make their hosts sick. And examples of this would include the bacteria that can cause diseases like strep throat, pneumonia, and syphilis, as well as the little protists that can cause diseases like giardia and malaria. Now the last type of interspecific interaction we're going to look at is those that occur when one species eats another. So the first type we're going to look at is predation, in which an animal predator kills and consumes another animal species known as the prey. So in this example we have a lizard eating a grasshopper, here's a bear eating a fish, and a wolf eating a bird. So this would be classified as plus minus because it's good for the predator, they get food, but clearly not so good for the prey. And there are lots of adaptations that evolve as a result of this type of interaction. So predators tend to have adaptations that help them catch and kill prey, and prey items tend to have adaptations that help them hide or protect themselves or run away from the predator. 
The other main type of interaction in which one species eats another is herbivory, and that's when an animal species, an herbivore, consumes part or all of a plant. And unlike most types of predation, it doesn't necessarily kill the entire plant. It might just take part of the plant and the rest of the plant can keep growing. So examples of this would include a caterpillar eating leaves or deer eating trees and shrubs and even humans eating salad. And this type of interaction would be classified as plus minus because it's good for the herbivore getting food, but not so good for the plant, which can be damaged or killed. So those are all the types of interspecific interactions that you need to know about. In class, we'll learn more about the different adaptations that arise as a result of these relationships. I think this is my last video for this school year, so thank you for watching, and keep taking care of yourself and each other.